A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the Millennium Falcon was being pursued by the Galactic Empire. But our daring, dashing scoundrel of a hero, Han Solo, maneuvered into an asteroid field in hopes that the Empire would slow down their pursuit and see it as suicide to continue their hunt. In the real world, we don't yet have the capability to fly in and out of an asteroid belt with such grace. We have sent robots to these small rocky worlds, and we are learning more and more about them every day. Most asteroids in our solar system lie in orbit between Mars and Jupiter. Through years of cataloging, scientists have estimated that this particular asteroid belt contains more than 750,000 asteroids that are larger than three-fifths of a mile, 200 of which are larger than 60 miles in diameter. But in total, astronomers believe that the belt between Mars and Jupiter contains millions of asteroids. Astronomers believe that this asteroid belt is made up of material that never formed into planets, or material from planets that broke apart a long time ago. The largest object in the asteroid belt is called Ceres. Ceres is roughly one-fourth the size of our moon, and is labeled as a dwarf planet. Let's move out, beyond the orbit between Mars and Jupiter, beyond the planets of our solar system, extending outward beyond the orbit of Neptune. This region is known as the Kuiper Belt. In 1930, Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto. Decades later, it was discovered that Pluto was just one of many like it in a region that would become known as the Kuiper Belt. In 1951, Gerard Kuiper predicted that there would be a collection of objects beyond our solar system, and on occasion, one of these icy objects would find its way into the inner solar system and become a comet. After all, if Pluto were closer to the sun, it would have a tail, it would be classified as a comet. The Kuiper Belt was confirmed and observed in 1992. In 2006, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet because it is compositionally similar to many objects found in the Kuiper Belt. New data improves our understanding. That newfound understanding forces us to look at things differently and reevaluate the knowledge of the past. That's the trademark of science. Compounding information, some gets thrown out, some gets confirmed, and more data gets piled on to form a greater understanding of the subject. The knowledge that there are many objects close in size to Pluto was one of the determining factors for its reclassification as one of the Kuiper Belt objects. The Kuiper Belt is 20 times wider and estimated to be 200 times more massive than the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It spans roughly 45 degrees of our sky, full of scattered objects and material that has been swirled around by Neptune. The objects, instead of sticking together and forming larger bodies, are smashing into one another, getting pulverized into dust, and some are being ejected outside of our solar system and others slung into the inside of our solar system. If you were to look for the Kuiper Belt in, let's say, a few hundred billion years, the Kuiper Belt would no longer exist. How do asteroids impact us on Earth? Pun very much intended. Near-Earth asteroids are asteroids that follow orbits that pass close to the orbit of Earth. As of June 2016, there are 14,464 known near-Earth asteroids. It's estimated that between 900 and 1,000 of these near-Earth asteroids are over one kilometer in diameter. Near-Earth asteroids survive in their orbit for only a few million years, often ejected from the solar system or collide with the sun or planets. This is a relatively short orbital lifespan, but new asteroids are constantly being observed, leading to an explanation that asteroids must constantly be moving into near-Earth orbits. The origin of these asteroids comes from Jupiter's gravitational influence. It disrupts an asteroid's orbit, causing it to come into the solar system. Is there a danger? Yes, a big danger. An extinction event is not outside the realm of possibility. It's happened before, it can happen again. Asteroids with a diameter of 13 feet hit the Earth approximately once every year. Every five years, an asteroid with a diameter of 23 feet hits the Earth. An object like this, one that's roughly 23 feet in diameter. Entering the Earth's atmosphere creates as much energy as the atomic bomb 
that was dropped on Hiroshima. Most of these objects explode in the upper atmosphere, most are vaporized. On June 30th, 1908, a large explosion occurred over a scarcely populated region in eastern Siberia. It is known as the Tunguska event. The object exploded at an estimated altitude of three to six miles. It didn't even impact the surface intact, but this atmospheric explosion flattened nearly 80 million trees over an area of 830 square miles, with energy estimated to be 1,000 times greater than that of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. Luckily, the area of this event was extremely remote. There were no documented deaths, but an explosion of this magnitude has the capability of destroying large metropolitan areas causing extreme devastation. The Tunguska event fuels the discussion about being prepared to deal with incoming asteroids and objects. After all, the object that caused this level of devastation was between 200 and 620 feet, and there are much larger objects out there. A hell of a lot of them. But then you have the big boys, the really big suckers, the ones that come every so often. There are 2,000 objects that we know of with a diameter of more than one kilometer that will eventually hit Earth. Mathematically, we can predict these things. They exist, they are out there. What can be done about these? How can we better protect and ensure the survival of our species? Well, first of all, government officials must heed the warnings of astronomers and scientists who study this stuff. That's really the first step in a thousand steps. But what are some methods that could potentially save us from catastrophe? Blowing up a near-Earth asteroid is generally a last resort when you listen to the experts. It would turn one large impacting object into many impacting objects. The consensus, the method that most experts seem to agree on, is known as an asteroid gravity tractor. This method puts a large unmanned spacecraft close to the asteroid and gravitationally draws the asteroid towards the spacecraft. The spacecraft would slowly thrust away from the asteroid and continue to pull the asteroid away from its impact trajectory. This method would likely take years, several years of the spacecraft gravitationally tugging or pushing on the asteroid would be needed. Another promising method would be a kinetic impact, basically ramming the near-Earth object with a high-mass spacecraft, knocking it off course. This is a non-nuclear, non-explosive method. It would basically punch the asteroid and send it off its current path. The European Space Agency is currently studying a design for two space missions that, if flown, would be the first intentional asteroid deflection mission ever designed. It has been argued by leading researchers that kinetic impact or deflection is more efficient than other proposed methods. Then there's the use of focused solar energy to create thrust from the material being vaporized from the asteroid. Then there's the mass drive, ion beam shepherd, asteroid laser ablation, conventional rocket engine, and a whole lot more. Thankfully, there are humans out there that are a whole lot smarter than us trying to figure out how to preserve our future. Asteroids, comets, dwarf planets, and objects like them are fascinating. They are relics of the past. They can tell us about the early formation of our solar system. They should absolutely be studied to broaden our knowledge of the cosmos. But more importantly, they should be studied because they are a threat to us all. Shooting stars are not stars. They are tiny bits of dust and rock falling through our atmosphere and burning up. But one day, that tiny bit of dust and rock won't be tiny at all. It'll be a big fat nugget of space death. And we need to double, triple, quadruple our efforts to prevent such an object from having its sights on humanity. Luckily, with the exponential growth of technology, it's looking like that we're gonna have a computer that can catalog every possible threat to our home and present the best possible method to prevent this from happening. Always with you at Connect Beta.